Hey everybody, Chad Madden here with the Grow Your Practice podcast, and today an uh, awesome guest. Really looking forward to this. But our our guest is Chandler Bolt. Uh, Chandler is the founder of Self Publishing School, uh, or I believe it's selfpublishingschool.com. Uh, he is the author of several books. Actually, working on one right now. We're going to do a deep dive into it. He's also uh, speaking with us from essentially the tech capital of the world right now, uh, Austin, Texas. So excited to have you here. Chandler, thanks for thanks for doing this. Chad, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So, um, I d- ton of stories we've talked about in the past, not on the podcast before. Um, the, the you talked about how you know you went through high school. Uh, I believe you went to a year or a couple months at Clemson, something like that. College right? of Charleston. I grew up in Clemson. Yeah, I okay. I grew up in Clemson. Went to College of Charleston realized I'm learning how to run a business from professors who had never ran a business. That didn't make too much sense to me. Dropped out, wrote some books, started self-publishing school. You know, that'd be like people saying, I'll go go learn how to grow my practice from someone who's never grown their practice before, right? Which is why I think a lot of people are ill-equipped to grow a practice coming out of PT school. Uh, It's because uh, you're not learning. To, I mean, it's, a, it's sorry, I'm just immediately taking this uh, down, down the road. But it's, I mean, this is why people learn from you guys. And I think why it's so smart that they are because you've done what you're teaching. Great. So the, I remember uh, you published your first book. You were uh, skiing for some odd reason. Yeah. I have you skiing yeah. in Europe or yeah. uh, snowboarding, something mm-hmm. like that. And you checked your Yeah. Yeah. Not so skiing. <laughs> you're snowboarding you, uh, <laughs> and you checked your account or something like that and you had uh, yep. royalties something like that coming in can you tell that story and just how you uh, impressed your friends and how that was a major cognition for you yeah I mean it's, it's it's so you know I'm 17 years old my dad hands me a copy of rich dad poor dad the classic book right that uh, almost every entrepreneur has read and it you know changed my life forever it showed me that books change lives and books change the lives of readers, right? Like so many of us have had our lives changed by reading a book, but then books also change the lives of authors. You know, we uh, sell publishing school. I run an online education company that helps people write and publish books. Um, but really we, we run a personal development company where it just so happens that the medium is books, right? We change people's lives in the process of writing and publishing a book, right? So that book showed me that, but it also kind of introduced me to this whole passive income thing. I'm super excited. My parents are like, Chandler, you're 17 years old. Uh, you don't have $40,000 to put down on a duplex, like maybe in the future, <laughs> we're not fronting the cash for you. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately fast forward all the way to writing and publishing this book while I'm dropping out of school. And that was like the light bulb full circle moment where it was, oh, I was snowboarding all day yesterday. The book made $400 in royalties. This is that passive income thing. I didn't think this would ever happen. Holy cow. And then that kind of ultimately became what I now call leveraged impact, um, which is basically the ability to do work once you create this book. And then that book goes on to impact thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Right. And so that's leveraged. You're bringing leverage to what you're doing. So in the same way that um, for, for PTs or uh, chiros or, you know, any medical professional, it's like, that is what you're doing when you create a book. You know, you do take all these, I call it broken record conversations, right? It's like the things that you just, you've said a thousand times and you could say in your sleep with every new patient, whether it's in the onboarding process or in the sales process, well, the best way to stop talking about that thing is to write a book about it and then just point to that book. And so that's really, you know, what I've tried to do with books in the past when I'm, I'm you know, you alluded to, I'm in the, in the process, I'm about to publish my next book and same thing. It's like, okay, I've got six years worth of broken record conversations, thousands of books that we've published. Like what are the things that we've learned? And then how do we put that in a book so that A, it helps people who can't afford our services. Um, but then B, it brings in more customers. It's like the best thing you could ever do to grow your business. It's funny, Chad, I was just writing about you in the book the other day, because I'll never forget the story you you told about. Um, I think it was people like, they read your book and they like drove eight hours or nine hours or something one way for to see you because they're like, oh, you're the guy on this thing. Just such a great example of that. Yeah, we uh, just to tie bow on that story really quick. Yeah, we've had people fly in from Idaho, California, down from Canada, drive in from New York City, Baltimore, Philly, Pittsburgh, uh, kind of crazy. 
uh, to our Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, not the destination capital of the world, as the joke always goes, <laughs> uh, all because we wrote a book and you know published a couple of videos um, and had them out there. Awesome. So, uh, in general, uh, I just wanted to make this comment. I don't have a the largest network in the world, but it's it's pretty big. I probably have never seen such a dramatic change in growth of a single person that I have uh, of you, because I think, I think I slept in your office in like 2014, <laughs> back in uh, San Diego it, yeah, it yeah. Right on, a, on an air mattress. Yeah. And I just, um, you know, really admire everything that you publish and you put out there. I want to talk about that. And, you know, really the, the culture of discipline that you've developed for yourself. But before we yep. get there, I want to talk about Hey, uh, you know, I have this, you know, the listeners here, um, yeah. the, the large majority of them are thinking, Hey, you know, that's great. I don't really have a book in me, but I really want to mm-hmm. do this. It's on my mm-hmm. bucket list for mm-hmm. my career. How do I overcome that? So can you talk a little bit about, you know, the thousands of people, and I'm sure you have a pretty close number of those that have gone through your course and have actually published a book. Um, if you yeah. can share numbers and also maybe help the one or two major things that you help them overcome on their way to publishing their first book? Yeah, great question. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, places I could go. I mean, so there's the why and then there's the how, right? Which the why is, I mean, I look at how do you use a book to get more leads, more sales, more referrals? Like, and then just if, if you're trying to stop tying your time to seeing patients. It's like, okay, now your book teaches all the other PTs in your office, your method. Like it's just a way to scale what you're doing and scale it beyond you. That's how I view a book. And you can intentionally plug the book into what you're doing. I know, um, I spoke at it. I know, I know, some, I know sometimes the Cairo, it's like a bad word. Um, uh, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're, you're uh, regenerative medicine, Cairo, all conservative care. We're really on the same team. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I know uh, uh, maybe it's just me that likes to poke fun. Um, but it, 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 it's, I was talking to this guy, um, I was speaking at a conference of Kairos and this guy built like the largest Cairo practice or one of them in Canada. And it was, he said, this is super simple. Like one very applicable thing is he gave two books to every single person that came in his practice. And he said, Hey, books usually don't come with strings attached. This one does. All I ask is that you give it to someone who needs help with X, Y, Z, right? Back pain or whatever the thing is. And the book was about, and then he said, he gave away a thousand books and got 260 referrals. So for every hundred books that he gave away, he got 26 patient referrals. I mean, it's one of the cheapest uh, acquisition strategies probably that he's ever done, right? So that's the why, but then there's the how. And so there's idea, there's writing, there's launch to just like really oversimplify it. Um, for the idea, I already spoke on that. What's your broken record conversations that you keep having with people? That's probably the, you're probably tired of talking about it. Um, so you're like, gosh, I don't want to write a book on that, but that can be the last time you talk about it. And then you just point to that book from here on out. So like, that would be the first step. Then second step, I call this the more writing method, M-O-R-E. So you mind map everything you can think of on the chat, on the topic. O stands for outline. You turn that uh, mind map into an outline. The R stands for rough draft. You write the book, the rough draft of the book, one chapter at a time by doing the mind map outline right or mind map outline speak, if you speak better than you write. And then there's editing. So that's the more writing method. So then you get it edited, you publish, you launch, right? So that's like kind of the simplistic flyby kind of overarching process. But yeah, we've helped, I mean, we've helped thousands of people publish books at self-publishing school. We, at least one book a day gets published. Most days it's more like two or three. Yesterday it was four um, books that published, right? So we, we've, we've, we do this all day, every day. Yeah. Going to give you a, a live uh, testimonial here because I went through your system um, and mm-hmm. I had done many others, uh, at least three others off the top of my head, uh, had published a book, j- just full context. When I went through your program, uh, worked with Sean, I believe, Sean Sumner, it, I believe. Oh, right? yeah. Um, awesome coach and ended up publishing two books in 90 days. So one for Breakthrough, Killer Marketing Secrets, published with your program. And then um, I 
did another book on uh, back pain that we still uh, use today. By the way, we, we use that same thing to hand out to to every patient coming in. It's fantastic. That's awesome. Works really That's well. Awesome. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that I want you to talk about briefly here is uh, mind mapping because my wife, I'm driving my wife crazy because I literally have crates. Um, I, I have one in the office here and I have one at home of legal pads where I just go through and mind map whatever it is if I'm going to present, if I'm going to uh, write a chapter or write an article, a blog post, whatever it may be, I'll mind map it first. Um, can you talk about maybe the derivation of that, how you discovered it? and ultimately how it helps people overcome um, writer's block and everything. It, it really pulls out the yeah. best out of the brain. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep it super simple because anyone to talk about some of the discipline stuff and the business stuff and the scaling stuff. So basically, I'll, you know, if you're watching the video version, obviously, if you listen to the podcast, you can't see this, but um, it's it, it, there's a, uh, you know, it's, this is a mind map. This is for the new book that I'm about to finish. So I do this for everything, whether it's talks, whether it's books. So a mind map is a brain dump of all the ideas around the topic of your book. Um, so you just and what basically happens is when you do this, you realize, holy cow. I get, this is a full book and I, here's all this content and all this knowledge that I have that um, I totally forgot that I had, right? So that's the goal. And then you just organize it and write it. So it makes the whole writing process way easier. Um, if you want to, just for, for time's sake, so we can get any other stuff. Um, if you want to go, go through this process, go to um, Google how to write a book. And we'll pop up as like one of the first or two, second or something. There's a there's an article right there on self publishing. So we'll just click that and then just walk through. The, it'll show, it'll walk through my map outline right like kind of faster than I can explain in 90 seconds. And you can see a visual of the mind mapping process. And there's like a you know big long uh, uh, kind of uh, tutorial. Yeah, I love it. Um, I actually had sent that link out to um. A a few people within the last three months. So oh, I can't cool. believe you brought that up. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. Oh, it, it's no, thank you. Um, worked out really well. So uh, the huge, I want to get back to the huge transformation, um, yeah. you, you know, and uh, in all fairness, when we met initially 2014, 2015, uh, and you were very new to the game, is that about the time you started? Yeah. I launched the first version of what became self-publishing school in 2014 and then launched actual self-publishing school in February, 2015. So that's right. dead on. So that's very early days of breakthrough, very early days of self-publishing school. And uh, I, yeah, I just remember talking with you and then watching you progress over time has been amazing. So can you talk about, uh, I, it looks like you have a very disciplined, uh, you, you know, you write goals for the month, you structure your day, in a certain way um, that you're achieving that. So you yeah. definitely have that culture of discipline. And can you talk about that and how you structure in terms of, and you essentially become a world-class elite business person at this point. So if yeah. you shed some light on that, that'd be awesome, Jim. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think, you know, I, I grew up in a very blue collar family. My parents uh, met working night shift at a factory uh, and didn't have much money and then ultimately worked their way from probably like upper low class, maybe like upper lower class to probably upper middle class over the span of three or four decades. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I guess about probably yeah, three or four decades. Um, they're in their 60s now. But and, and so I think the, the, their whole philosophy was like, you know, I would have I would have been the first person to get a four year degree. Um, out of anyone in my family, I dropped out of school, um, but I would have been right. So it's like their whole philosophy was, uh, you know, work ethic and you can outwork anyone, be disciplined, go after what you want. And then obviously, you know, a lot of people listening to this might not know my brother um, plays in a Grammy nominated rock and roll band called Need to Breathe. So that's there's like kind of a massive band. And so he, it was a kind of a perfect storm of like, I learned the discipline and the work ethic from them. And then I kind of had the confidence that, hold up, I can do whatever I want for my brother. Cause he just went out and blazed that trail and was like, Hey man, people told me, when am I going to get a real job and stop doing music and check this out, <laughs> you know, playing arenas. <laughs> and uh, so that was really helpful for me of like, Oh, I can think bigger. But then also I think, uh, 
if I'm being honest with myself, it gave me a chip on my shoulder of like all growing up. Everyone was like, oh, you're Seth's little brother, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm like, no, I'm not Seth's little brother, Seth's my brother. <laughs> and so it's just like kind of this feeling of like, man, I got to go do something with my life. Cause if not, I'm going to be like, the unsuccessful little brother of the rock star. <laughs> and so I think that kind of gave me a chip on my shoulder, but then, then it was just getting out there and doing the work. And so I think it's been it's so funny. I was just telling someone about this the other day, Austin Netsley, um, who, who, you know, and um, uh, runs a company called 2X. And I was like, yeah, it's so interesting watching our companies grow similarly because we started at similar times. And it was like every year you're on a similar path. Um, and then I think, probably as of the last 18 months, it was just like, you guys just hockey sticked. Um, and, and so I was like, I think my superpower is disciplined execution. And I think you guys are, have really solid execution, but you're way better at me strategically. So that's what I was explaining to someone was like, that's the difference. Like I didn't realize what was being built. I, Cause it was like, you know, I'm a competitive guy. So I'm like, yo, Carl, how, how'd you guys do last year? Oh man. We're like a few hundred thousand less than that. We're going to beat you next year. Um, and, and it was just like, and then it was like, boom. And so then I just remember being like, what the crap? Like, how, how did that happen? And, and it was because you guys are so much, I think, so much more strategic and you made better strategic decisions along the way that compound. So I think that's the, so, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's my superpower is the discipline execution thing. I think a lot of people can learn from that. It's like, we went zero to 32 million, 33 million, whatever it is at this point in like six and a half years. Um, so that's, uh, you know, a, a big, big climb, but I think what I'm reflecting on now is like, okay, how do I be more strategic in that discipline execution? And that's what I'm, I think bring more leverage. And so that's why I'm looking to, looking to you guys and, and uh, looking to learn. Yeah. You're, you're killing it, man. Um, a, a day in the life of, so yeah. the, you, you have very specific habits. Reading is a big one. I think you're reading four books a month. Four books a month. A, yep. Yep. Um, and uh, so crushing it there. Um, reading obviously is huge for you. What other habits do you have that are, are advancing you forward with that strategic execution and making you a better executive day in, day out? Yeah. Great questions. Um, you know, it's like the classic, it's, it's not easy, but it is simple. <laughs> and, uh, it's, uh, Gosh, it's a day in my life is pretty boring. Um, actually, it's like both eventful and boring all at the same time. You know, it's like, wow, if you just like really like fly on the wall of all the crazy stuff that goes on running a business, but then also like just the structure is very similar. So there's a, and I, there's a keystone habit, which is a morning, my morning routine. I mean, that is like the one thing such that doing it makes everything else easier or unnecessary, right? That is, I mean, the thing. My buddy, Hal Elrod, wrote a book called The Miracle Morning. He's like the biggest. He's sent us more customers than anyone ever um, at self-publishing school. Um, he's a big proponent of what we do, but I, implementing his Miracle Morning changed my life forever. So that's the one thing. I've got a video on this. On my, I've got this Seven Figure Principles YouTube channel that's just and podcast that's just like basically operator nerd stuff that like, how do you scale a business and business and ops and team and all that stuff. So um, you guys are welcome to check that out if you want. There's nothing for sale there. It's just a bunch of helpful content. Um, and one of those is my morning routine and how to, how to structure a morning routine, all that. That's the biggest one you alluded to that. It's getting my body moving, reading. I've been a little bit not, I've been a little bit lax on this as of, as of late, but um, meditating in the morning and like stuff like that. Um, so that's one of the big habits, then it's, I mean, planning my day the next day, the night before, and my top three for the day. There's, I'm, I mean, basically for me, it's what are the quarterly goals for the company? Um, and what are my monthly goals? So I'm, I mean, you alluded to that. I don't know, I'll post those on Facebook every month. It's just like public accountability, but it's like, okay, here's my goals for this month right here. And then, okay, what are my goals for the week? Also right beside me on the on the table here of like, okay, number one, finish my rough draft of this new book. <laughs> number two, self-edit the first 10 chapters. Uh, number three, create the timeline for content editing. <laughs> so I can actually get it published in the next two months or next 45 days. Um, and 
So it's like, okay, the, the, you know, that's, so that's how I know, did I win the week to help me win the month, to help me win the quarter. So like, and doing blocking that stuff in the morning, so important. Um, again, this is probably nothing revolutionary, but it's, uh, it, it's not new, but it does work. Um, and so it's like blocking those things, blocking my morning time. I call that prime time. It's like, that's when I get stuff done in a, in a serious way. Um, and, and batching a bunch of other stuff. I mean, there's a bunch of little things like that, but then a big one for me that I, I just love talking about this because no one loves to talk about it um, is I take a nap every single day. Um, and so 16 minute nap after lunch, um, I've already had my nap today. So that's why I'm not a zombie talking to you right now in the afternoon. Um, it's, it's, a, it's big for me. And so that's like, I get two days in one by taking that nap. Um, and then there's a, just a bunch of other little things but i mean that's kind of like the 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 i'd say the pillars and there's i guess one last thing i mentioned is buffer and focus days it's really helpful is um my focus days are, are tuesday and thursday um and uh my my uh, buffer days are monday wednesday friday so just batching stuff and so like this was two i know you're doing the same thing it's like two back-to-back podcast interviews and then i have four back-to-back one-on-ones so it's like all right and then, this, but this morning I had hours of uninter- uninterrupted time to work on my book. So it's just like picking your spots and not just splicing up your week and letting people just kind of willy nilly schedule throughout your week and that sort of thing. Yeah. I, I, I know you did a really nice job of downplaying that, but uh, that, that it's common, but <laughs> you, you mentioned uh, Hal Elrod in there, Miracle mm-hmm. Morning. We've talked about that before. Love that book um, and everything that that is about and the whole movement. Uh, the 20 minute nap or 16 minute nap. I, I do 22, j- literally yeah. just did it right before this <laughs> no <laughs> way. podcast. Yeah. It. Um, huge in, in terms of uh, being able to get up in the morning. And uh, yeah. I even find that it helps my sleep at night and my HRV uh, heart rate variability at night. Yeah. Um, and the, yeah, the batching is huge. And just for everybody that's listening to this um, batching is where we put, we schedule like activities together. So it's not, uh, you know, a marketing activity and then an executive activity and then a personnel activity. It's a day of marketing or maybe a three hour block of marketing time, a three hour block of writing time, a three hour block of personnel, things like that. Um, are you allowed to, am I allowed to ask you about the new book? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. What's it about? It's not, it's not going to be like, it's probably going to be very underwhelming to you because you know, Come stuff. On, man. Um, no, it's, it's, it's basically, it is an updated and revised version of my book published. Um, and so the, published the Proven Bath from Blank Page Published Author. So basically what I realized was, uh, it's kind of crazy. Like my brother was telling me, he's like, yeah, I'm about to go on tour and my guitar tech, like the guy who um, like tunes or guitars and does all that stuff. Um, he was like, he's like, Hey, how's your brother doing? He's like, how do you know my brother? He's like, Oh, I read his book and published and I published a book. And I'm like, I'm in Austin going to coin op. Um, it's like this barcade. I love barcades. Um, and, and, uh, he, and this person that comes up to me is like, Hey, are you Chandler Bolt? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, Oh, um, and I'm like, who's asking? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and then it's like, oh, well me, and then this is my sister. We both read your book and published a book. And it's just like, these stories just kept popping up everywhere. And so I'm thinking, you know, it's been, I published six books in three years. And I was like, I am not doing that for a long time. Like, no, no, thank you. Uh, and, and then I got to thinking, I'm like, hold up. It's been a long time since I published this book. And so it's, uh, it was November of 2016. So it's been five years and, you know, we've published thousands of books since then. I've done probably over a thousand webinars and talks. We've done tens of thousands of coaching calls. We've done like a bajillion curriculum improvements. We created like children's book school, a fiction for like all these different genres, like all this stuff. And so I was like, man, and we didn't even have a sales team back then. So it's like, how do I not have anywhere in this book? a link that says click here to book a call with my team if you want to implement this right like that's the primary mechanism and how we bring in business now but it's not even anywhere in this book and there's just all those things it's like all right it's it's time to drop the mic um on this and uh these are my broken record conversations right and so the book's got close to a thousand reviews on amazon right now 
we'll, uh, I just, re- I'm 30 minutes away from finishing the rough draft. It's well, you know, the feeling, I think it's really good, but come back to me when I read the draft for the first time. <laughs> uh, that's going to be, so later this week, I'm either going to be in a ball crying or uh, I'm going to be really excited. One of the two, either way, I got about four weeks to uh, get it edited and, and out the door. So, um, but yeah, so th- that's the, the goal is to say, hey, this is the definitive book on the topic. So if you or anyone else is like, hey, uh, I, I, they, you hear someone think about writing a publishing book. It's like, you got to read this book. And then the goal is to just knock people's socks off in such a major way that the people who are a fit, you know, it helps people who can't afford to work with us. They can use it. But then the people who are a fit, they're like, Hey, I want to work with you guys. And it's just a much better bridge. So basically we learned a lot about turning readers into subscribers or readers into buyers. And so I'm implementing a lot of that stuff in tandem with this book. Uh, and I think it's going to, I think it's going to blow up because there's a lot, there's just a lot of noise, you know, this um, in my space. It's just like everyone who's ever written a book is like, oh, I'm going to start a program about how to, how to write a book. And so it's just very noisy. There's so much, it's a red ocean. There's so much competition um, for, for those who are f- familiar with blue ocean theory or blue ocean strategy. And so for me, it's like, all right, it's still a red ocean and that sucks. <laughs> um, but how do I, how do I kind of, break out of that and it's creating frameworks trademarking those frameworks creating this but like just a bunch of little things like that that i'm using this book to kind of all right we're planting the flag we're gonna have had a bunch of people rip off our stuff and our taglines and all that stuff is just everywhere you probably you probably see it in your newsfeed it's like everyone's got a blank page to publish something and like it's like the new seven minute apps um <laughs> it's Six like a half race yeah, yeah right um so anyways i'm getting on a soapbox here but um so so that's the goal with it and i'm, I'm super excited about it. yeah and, and i mean i've probably have read 20 to 25 ebooks on how to publish and it's out there there are literally thousands of articles in yeah. uh, medium and it, yeah completely get it I, I i will say from going through your course from reading your unique blend and having been through other programs as well, you have a, a true magic sauce, man. So I appreciate um, it, that. It, in terms of getting people to the finish line, like if that is the goal, like, Hey, I'm going to yeah. do this. I want somebody to hold me accountable. I want to publish yeah. and I want to use this to create authority, celebrity expertise within my niche. Your program's the one. Um, it, so the newest books coming out. If somebody wants to read um, or look into this more, what's the best way for them to, get a copy of your book is it amazon or do you want to send them somewhere yeah else? Yep. yeah you're catching me so early in the process i've been i've been head down on uh I, i've been head down on all things writing and haven't got to the marketing stuff but I, I do know that there's two links that'll work right now so there's self-publishingschool.com forward slash published like i published a book so self-publishingschool.com forward slash published and then i'll give one more all i ask is that you guys don't share this um, so Ooh. there, there's a link it's self dash publishing school.com forward slash friend. Okay. And that's because you're a friend of Chad's and literally, if you go there, I will ship you a copy of this book for free. You don't even have to pay shipping and handling. It's, it's just a thing. So I'll actually take a step back. This is a lesson within a lesson, right? One of the things I think books do is make it, uh, easy for people to refer you, um, and so, man, you guys could totally do this with your practice or your practice owners is, so what we do is we say, all right, how do you make it easy to refer someone? Well, what, easy to remember how to do it. And then how do I make the person look good? So the link self-publishingschool.com forward slash friend, it's like, oh yeah, I've got a friend that wants to write a book. Oh, forward slash friend. Like I'll go there, but then basically you give them the link and then your friend gets a free copy of my book. They don't even have to pay shipping and handling. And there's a little video on there that's like, hey, you know, Chad, it doesn't say Chad, obviously, but it's like, hey, your friend's awesome. Um, and they hooked you up big time. So get a free copy. It's on me. It's on them. Um, or it's it's on on me on behalf of them. <laughs> not paying for it. Um, but uh, in, in scroll below this video, fill out the form. I'll ship you a copy of the book. And then on the thank you page, it says, hey, um, thanks so much. Going to ship you the book. It'll be there in a couple of weeks. If you're kind of like, you're going to love this book. The one thing this book can't do is talk to you about your goals. 
uh, and help and, and, and give you personalized advice. If you're serious about this, book a call with my team right now and let's talk to you about your book and see how we might be able to help. Oh, by the way, if you join, um, you're going to get $250 off the program. It's the cheapest price you can get anywhere, all because you got recommended by your friend, right? And so then what happens is we just set up a dual way referral, like a dual referral program. These are very common, right? But it's basically they get the cheapest price they can get it anywhere by being referred and their friend gets, I think it's 250 bucks. So it's like their friend gets 250 bucks if their friend signs up just because they gave them a free book, right? And then their friend gets hooked up with a free book and the cheapest pricing on self-publishing school. It's just like, it's just such a no brainer. Um, so that's kind of our attempt to just say, hey, how can we turn act active customers into active referrers? And obviously with your practice or anyone's practice who's listening to this, you could just do the same exact thing as soon as you publish your book and you make it easy for people to refer you business. Right. So self-publishingschool.com forward slash friend. Friend. Yep, exactly. Awesome, man. Thanks for doing that. Uh, two questions for you. Um, first one is best book you read this year. Man, that is so tough. Most memorable. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, man, you really put me on the spot. Um, that, that, gosh, cause I read four books a month. Um, I will go, oh man, I can't even think of one right now. So I'm just going to go back to the well. Uh, I haven't, I haven't read this book this year. Um, but it's just a classic. I know. I'm sorry. Um, it is, uh, extreme ownership. That's my, I think one of my top books of all time, the best book, best leadership book of all time, in my opinion. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, and then I'll give a shout out because I'm, I can see it because I've read it this month. I'll give a shout out to one of our students' books, actually. It's called Skip the Flip. It's about real estate investing. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's just very practical, straightforward. If you're interested in real estate investing, it's kind of like a beginner's guide, which for me, I'm like, uh, I'm thinking about getting into it. He's been on bigger po pockets. He's got like 600 views on this book. Like he's killing it, but it was good. Uh, skip the flip. Great. Real estate skip investing. Flip and extreme. Yeah. Ownership. Awesome. Yeah. Man. Very cool. Uh, final question last night and uh, out of respect for time. Cause I know um, you have some other things coming up here. So uh, last night, I'm at home, six kids, most of them play musical instruments. Our nine-year-old grabs his clarinet, just got it a, a week ago, and he wants to play high cross buns. And you had mentioned um, that you come from a musical family. What was your musical instrument growing up? Oh, man. Uh, well, originally it was saxophone. So I commented on your, your uh, Facebook video with your son. <laughs> Um, cause I was like, man, that brings back memories and, and power to the woodwinds. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I was originally with saxophone. I was pretty horrible. Um, and, it, it, and then I got into drums and my brother taught me how to play drums and I ended up playing drums and, and I started a band and we played shows and all that stuff. So drums was like, really, I would say drums is the instrument I know how to play, but funny story around this. So maybe this will, uh, Maybe this will inspire your son. I don't know. Maybe you don't want it to. Uh, so I was playing saxophone for a couple of years and I switched to the drums and I just notified my band teacher. I'm like, hey, I'm switching to the percussion section. She's like, no, you, you can't. And I'm like, uh, I watch me. Like, I'm just going to go with the percussion people every day at band. Like, what, what? I'm doing it. Like, I'm not interested in, in saxophone anymore. And it was really cool, though. Um, I don't even know why I'm telling the story, but um, it, it was really cool because with percussion and maybe this is like the ADHD, the, all that stuff is like, I could, we had to practice for 30 minutes a day or something. And I could just listen to music and then play the drums to it. And like, that was cause I, 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 I kind of knew how to read music, but I never like uh, my brain just, I don't really think worked that way. So it was like, Oh, I don't have to read music. I can play, learn by ear and I can, and I can play the drums to these songs. And it just so happens that when you do that, you learn really good rhythm because you, ha you have to play on time, right? And so it's like, that was my way to get in my 30 minutes a day. Got pretty decent at drums. And here we are. So tell your son to keep going. <laughs> Love it, man. We, we have a full drum, drum set in our, uh, 
in our garage. I'll I'll send you a video for that. It's like the worst <laughs> instrument your kids can play. Like honestly, guitar. Like teach them guitar. It's a practical instrument that you can play for. I, you know, I feel kind of feel kind of dumb. I'm like, man, unless I got a slap box. Like if there's a jam session going on, I I'm I can't contribute. But yeah, we 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 do that as well. Guitar. Oh yeah, it's musical house. Love it. Um, the, so final thing, uh, for our listeners, for our viewers, what's the best way, uh, to find you, to follow you, uh, keep up with what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so I am, uh, gosh, super old school. I'm literally just on Facebook. Um, so if you want to, if you want to find me, find me on Facebook. Um, if you want to check out self-publishing school, go to self-publishingschool.com forward slash apply. That's basically, if you're like, Hey, this sounds interesting. I'd love to chat with you guys. And see what it would look like to work together. It's self-publishingschool.com forward slash apply. You can book a call with the team. It'll probably be the best 45 minutes you've ever spent on your book. We'll start mapping out a plan and, and see how we might be able to help. So those are kind of the two best places. Awesome. Chandler Bolt, Self-Publishing School. Thank you so much for being on here and uh, see you soon, man. Thank you, Chad. Remember to visit getbreakthrough.com to access our free resource library designed specifically for private practice growth. While you're there, make sure you register for a complimentary growth assessment to learn about potential opportunities for growth in your local market. Again, thank you for tuning into the Grow Your Practice podcast and supporting our mission to help people in pain get back to normal naturally.